Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about the Solo Growth Model. Okay guys, so in order to understand the Solo Growth Model, we first start with the assumptions underpinning that model. Assumption number one is that there are constant returns to scale in that economy. Assumption number two is that it's a closed economy where the income level is equal to consumption plus saving and just bear in mind saving is the exact same as investment in this closed economy and thirdly capital and labor are subject to what we term diminishing marginal returns okay so in terms of the solo growth model we have a y-axis up here where we look at output y per labor unit l so y over l and what we have here is capital per unit of labor down on the x-axis. So that is the capital per work. What we will have in the diagram is number one, a production function. And a production function looks at output growth based on two different factors of production and productivity. So here we have a basic production function, which is equal to, we will put in a term beta here, representing the productivity in the, for, in the economy. That's how capital and labor is combined. That is a function of both two key factors of production, labor L and K representing the capital infrastructure in that economy. So output is derived from labor and capital subject to diminishing returns, which means that the greater the level of capital in the economy, in this case here, or labor, the output increases, but at a diminishing rate. Okay, next up then, we're going to look at the investment level, which is key in the solo growth model. And what we're gonna see is this is represented by a curve line as well, which increases initially and then diminishes over time while still increasing. So this represents investment, which can also be called the saving. And thirdly, and finally, in this solo growth model, we have, we have capital, which is subject to deterioration or depreciation, in other words. And in that case, we have a constant rate of depreciation, which we assume in this economy. So a constant rate represented by a line here, and we will put in this term to represent depreciation in the economy. So in a constant rate over here. We are going to drop into the economy at one point, and at this point, we have a relatively low level of capital. So that capital is quite close to zero, and we will call that K1. At K1, we have a level of investment in the economy, which is relatively high at this point indicated, compared to the level of depreciation. We also have a production level associated with this, and that gives us an output per worker, y over L. So y divided by L1. We have the investment level, which is higher than our depreciation rate. And wherever we see this in economy, where there's higher investment than depreciation, we have an accumulation of capital. Because not only are you spending enough to compensate for any wear and tear of capital, you also have money left over to invest in accumulating new capital. So in this case, we tend to move along our investment line here because it's representing an accumulation of capital across to our right. And capital will continue to accumulate wherever the investment level represented by the red line is higher than the depreciation rate of capital, which is the green line. So wherever we see gaps here as indicated, capital will be accumulating in that economy. Therefore, it accumulates up to this key point over here, which we call the steady state. So this is the steady state growth rate. And at this point, what we will see is that the capital level in the economy, and we will call this K star for the steady state, the capital level here and the investment level is exactly equal to the depreciation rate. So in this economy, the amount of investment 
the money being spent on investment is the exact same as the depreciation of capital. So you are keeping the capital up to date, you are compensating for wear and tear, but you are no longer accumulating extra capital. And this is associated with an output level and an output level per worker as well, which we see over here on the left. And we'll put that in as Y over L and we'll call that star. So that is a steady state rate from which there is no tendency to change. What we can see as well is if we go beyond this level in terms of a capital level that is higher than the indicated, well, at K2, a higher capital level, what will happen is the depreciation rate is now higher than the investment level. So your investment level in terms of money is not high enough to cover depreciation. Due to that, there's wear and tear of capital. Some of it becomes obsolete and your level of capital begins to diminish. And in that case there, we come back to our steady state level. So if capital is lower than the steady state rate, we accumulate it and we increase. If capital is higher than the steady state rate, we our capital becomes obsolete and diminishes. And there's only one point that is a steady state rate with an output per worker level. And at that level, it's key that there is still a growth rate and the growth rate is indicated by the slope of the production function. So that slope is indicated here by the purple line. That slope is equal to the steady state growth rate of our economy. And that is the solo growth model. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.